Hello and welcome to Wooden Graphite, the number two pens of his video channel on the internet. Now this is something you might not have seen on the channel before. This is a computer screen and on that computer screen you can see this lovely old pencil box. Now I, I do a lot of design work if you haven't already figured out. Um, I taught myself how to do design in Illustrator a number of years ago uh, thinking that it would be a fun hobby, a fun skill to have and it's actually proved more useful than I ever could have imagined. Now, I recently designed a sticker for CW Pencils, and that sticker is really, really cool. It came out far better than I ever expected. I thought I would show you the design process a little bit from my perspective. So, this is the box of a, an Eberhard Faber No Blot ink pencil. Now, Caroline actually gave me one of these pencils for doing the sticker. Now, I have it in my hands. You can't see it because there's no video. Uh, but it is a gorgeous pencil from about 1900, I think. I'm not sure if I'm going to sharpen it up and use it too much because I think there's aniline dyes in it, which aren't terribly healthy for you. But it is a gorgeous pencil. The Nobla Ink Pencil Everhard Faber USA 705. It's got this gold end cap on it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So I was on CW Pencils just checking out the information on this and I happened to see this image. Now this is just straight from brand name pencils. Um, it's just a scan, I guess, of the old box. It's not a very high resolution image. This is scaled way up, so you can see there's a lot of um, distortion there. And uh, what rem what really got me is this is very similar to the image I designed, the bumper sticker for Erasable, because it's the same Everhard Faber striped kind of box, except this is no blot rather than Blackwing. So I thought I would show you how I go about designing this. This is a super simple image. Um, how I design this, so first of all I'll copy the rough template and then I'll maybe make it wood and graphite just as like a joke because I don't want to infringe on anyone's copyrights, kind of like a, even though Eberhard Faber isn't it's the same company anymore, I don't want to steal their design exactly. Um, if I transform it into my own kind of uh, play on it, then I think it's a bit more acceptable in terms of uh, copyright usage. So this is what we're going to do, we'll move it up to the top and this is super rough and ready. So. If you are a designer, if you know what you're doing, you're probably going to see a lot of stuff that you don't like. You're probably going to see a lot of stuff that you think, hey, this guy's an amateur. I work a very certain way. It's a way that works for me. And uh, I'm just going to jump in and get started and you can kind of see how it goes. So the first thing I notice is that this is not actually square. This side is higher than this side. So I'll try and make a square version of that. So I use a lot of shapes. This is the rectangle tool. So I'm going to go ahead and first sketch out the rough size of the thing. So, in fact, if we use the actual box, that's a good shape. So there is our rectangle. That's going to be the base. And we can uh, take the line away from the outside because we don't need that. We can make it a nice bright color so you can see it. So this is the base of our shape. And this is exactly the same dimensions as this. So anything we recreate and move down should fit relatively closely. So if then I might take here and draw another box to be this height. See the way that line doesn't reach the whole way across? It's because it's at a slant. So if you put it there and we make this a different color and we bring this down until it snaps to the bottom there, we now have the green, which is this bit, and purple, which is this bit. Now, the easiest way to do this is probably design straight over the top, which is what I'm going to do now. So if we group those together and then drop their transparency down to, say, 50%, we can now see through them. So we put them back over the top, hey presto, we can see exactly where our lines are. So then if we group all of this stuff and put it in the middle again, because it's nice to work from the middle, we can now see, hey, we're getting a rough idea of where everything is. And like I said, this is a super, super simple design. It's really not tough at all. So we want a circle. There is a circle. And if I just take that away, the circle goes over the top of the black. Let's make it a different color again. I'll tend to work in super bright garish colors uh, to begin with because it's easier for me to see. And then I'll do all the color work afterwards uh, once I get the actual shapes done. So we have our black line along the bottom. We have our background here. We have our red. Well, it's kind of brown color now. It's a blue circle on the actual design. So the next step is this funky looking little tagline here. So let's start with the little one because it's going to be slightly harder and we'll draw out the rough shape. So again it's it's kind of a rectangle right? So you draw the rectangle and then we'll grab this anchor and we'll move it in until it matches roughly where it is. And then we'll make a nice pink color because that's nice and horrible looking. And then 
super simple. We'll copy this, paste another one on top. It's Command C, Command F, and move it down and there. And then we'll just select here and here. And oop. now we have an underneath. So put that underneath. Now we have exactly what we have there, except this has a line around it. But I'll do that in the coloring afterwards. So now we have that shape. And where does that go in relation to the circle? Over the circle. So we'll paste it back over the top. And then it's really just a case of repeating, rinsing and repeating. So this goes about yay. And we'll drag it all the way out to here. Again, you can see how off that image is. It's really, really not straight. Um, I could straighten it up and work from that. To be honest, this is going to be um, somewhat not accurate anyway. So rather than doing a lot of accurate work on something that doesn't need to be accurate, it's probably better to just design it as it comes. So you can see now that's starting to look a bit weird because there's too much space here and there's too much space here. So we just work with what we got. So there we go. And exactly the same. We got to have a, a version of this. This probably needs to be a little taller. So I'll normally grab that and I'm pressing A to get direct selection of just those points. So then if I move them, the other points stay. So I'll probably put it around there and that's kind of splitting the difference. So as you can see, very, very quickly, we have a very rough sketch. I'm probably not going to do the ink well because it's not really relevant to what I'm going to do it for. So I'll probably put my logo in here and uh, or a pencil or something. I'm not sure yet, but this is just kind of give you an idea of how quickly and easily it is to design some of these old um, pencil boxes because they I mean, this would have taken a lot longer back in the day when you didn't have computers and you didn't have all this uh, fun stuff to help you. But redesigning it in the age of computers is um, relatively quick and easy. So there we go. We have almost all the elements laid out. I'm not going to recreate this logo, even though I love it, because again, that's a Everhard Faber logo, and I don't want to infringe horribly. I mean, this design is being copied, but I don't want to straight up steal their design and uh, sell it as stickers or something. So next step is this rounded rectangle. So we're going to get the vague proportions. It's probably about that. And then we can change the uh, roundness of those corners as well, because you can see it's quite a round corner on them. That's probably about it. And let's make this a different color again. And drop the transparency so we can see. And then just flip it around. And it goes underneath. So we'll put it underneath. And a lot of this is just kind of tinkering with it, making it work, making it fit, making it feel like a sort of straightforward design that you'd want to have. A little bit more. And there you go, we have the basis there of all the shapes we need, except for the lines in the background, which I'm going to do right now. Now, lines are a tricky one. Uh, you can do a bunch of different ways. I tend to use the rectangular grid tool because it's super fast. So I'll just make a grid the right size. And then I'll reduce these lines. And again, I'm not looking to get exactly the same. I'm looking to get accurate enough that people go, hey, that looks just like that, but it's not, because then I don't get sued. So there, I mean, just right off the bat, we've got something that looks pretty close. As you can see, these lines on the right-hand side line up pretty well. And after that, they tend to move a little bit. But um, yeah, we'll drop that there, see what happens. So now we have, there we have all our lines. And so there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Um, probably the fastest way is the paint bucket tool, I think. So here we have the paint bucket tool. We'll just use this and this will turn it into a shape. And then there are almost definitely faster ways of doing this, but let's just go ahead and go white, 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 white. And then we have it, we have our white stripe. So they can go right to the back and then forward one just to be behind. So now is probably the, f the best time to start doing our color work. So we want to select the image at the very, very back, which is our source image. And we want to ungroup it from its group. And we want to just see it on its own. Let's drag it out of there. And now we can see what we've just drawn in all its technicolor glory. So let's move this beast 
up and out of the way so we can get this in underneath. So you can see the, the rough shapes and colors that I've designed there and how they kind of correlate. So then we can very, very quickly make this look a lot better by just changing the transparency of everything to 100% because we want it to be nice and vivid. Already that looks better. So this is going to be black and this is going to be black. So they're going to be the same color. And then the backgrounds of both of those little text boxes are also going to be black and need to be under their respective things. So that needs to go under there and this needs to come up one. It's below both of those. Yeah, just like that. This is a beautiful blue color. The background is this kind of off blue color, which I'm not doing justice with that eyedropper. It's probably somewhat closer to that. That's a little brighter, but we'll leave it for now. Again, these are just off white. So we're gonna have a nice off white color. And you can see very, very quickly, we have pretty much the same shape and outlook as the uh, the original right there. And that's really cool. One thing that's really bugging me is this last line here is just not the right color. And it's really frustrating me. I just want it to look like that. Because I want, I want it to be blue, blue on both sides because then we get nice uh, delineation on the colors. So let's have a look and make sure everything looks right. This black shadow is a little bit too high. Let's bring it down a tad. And we haven't got any text in, obviously. And this is above that. It should be underneath. And that one looks fine. That one looks fine. So now we have the same shapes as the original. Uh, this is a lot more yellow. That's because the paper has weathered. But uh, shape-wise, everything looks the same. So I think the next step is to throw some text on there and I have to actually think what would be good for that. So here we go. I've made a few changes and added some text and I thought you wouldn't want to see all that. So I've just jumped ahead. So you can see I've done a little bit of work on the text. I've got analog is not dead, wooden graphite, the number two pencil based video channel, a YouTube channel about pencils. It's kind of just filling out the content and these nice vintage looking black wing dealios here, which are in no way finished yet. I'm just kind of stuck them in here to see how they would look. And uh, I'm going to show you how they fit into the final design in just a second. So there are a few little things to finish off, and then we are done with this design. Um, a few final tweaks and changes that will uh, hopefully make it shine. But once that's done, uh, we'll see about maybe making this into a full-time sticker at some stage in the future. So the first thing I want to do is, uh, if you look here, this does not have a black border on the edge. There's a black line in the shadow here and along. But on mine, there's a black line here. So we need to get rid of that because it's bugging me and I don't like it. So the easiest way to do that is probably scissors. And then just delete that. So there we go. That was painless. So now we have this nice cream edge right to the end. Um, da -da -da, that looks relatively close. There's no shadows or anything in here. So we're just dealing with blue. It's important to try and replicate it fairly closely so that people know what you're talking about. Um, oh, this little logo here, I like it, but I can't use it. So I'm going to make another one of my own. So let's throw this in here. Um, it's quite high up, actually. I'm going to center mine a bit more because I don't like it being that high. Let's make it a semi-hex. That was easy. And let's throw a circle in the middle. Just by there. And let's make that that. And then we'll cut that out of this. Hey, presto. We have ourselves a nice little logo to go right about there. So next thing is that this text, I can't find the original font for this. I've matched them as closely as I can. They're not right, but they're close. Um, I can't make this, this font is close enough. It's called communist, um, but I can't get it. That's not right at all. That is. That's close, but it's not quite thick enough. So what I'm going to do is I normally take the text and copy it above so that I have a copy should I accidentally ruin it because Command Z can only do so much. And then I'll expand it, which turns it into shapes rather than text. And then I'm going to go ahead, zoom in so I can see it, and go Object, Path, 
offset path and just play around with this. So 10 is way too much. Let's say two. See the way that chunks it up just a little bit without changing the overall style? It's probably still too much. One, let's try one. That really chunks everything up a bit, which is what we want. So if I go back here, see that looks a lot thicker than it would be. Now it's not an exact match, um, but it's a damn sight closer than it was before. So now we have those, and we can just turn them all into one shape. Oh, I've just noticed that, and it bugs me. See that? Because this is a stroke, it doesn't have the same shape properties, so it doesn't line up. So let's go ahead and expand that into a shape. And then take this. And this, and just move them out. Just, just shimmy them on out there till the match. Because that's the kind of thing that would drive me absolutely nuts. Just one little point not lining up. No one else would notice, but it would absolutely kill me. So yeah, that's actually looking quite good. I'm quite pleased with that text. Um, this blue in the background is still probably a little bit too blue. It's probably more pale than the original, but it will. Uh, when I print it, it'll come out differently. So we got to make sure that we're giving some leeway for the actual end product. So then this is pretty close, actually. Um, this looks a little bit small and, and kind of on its own. I'm going to just quickly copy and paste one. Um, and then make a small version. How does that look? In fact, we'll do this. We'll do this by the books. Let's copy and flip it over there. So does that look better? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just random shapes, but it's pretty cool. So there you go. That's our little faux design. And we're getting pretty close. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that this pencil is way out of shape. These are far too big. I like where they are, but they're far too big. Also, the black doesn't match. So we'll go ahead and select all of the same fill color and then just make it the same as that. Which blends them in nicely because we don't want to have too many colors because it starts to look odd. And then this, now we can be fancy. So I'll select all three of these pencils and we'll group them. And then we'll take this background and we'll copy it and paste one above. So now we have, see the one below? We have the one below, and we got the one above. And what we're going to do is make a clipping mask. Ta da! So it cuts out the pencil. So now we have our three nice little pencils in the circle. We've got our little design, we got our wooden graphite, we got analogs not dead, number two pencil based video channel, and a YouTube channel about pencils. And that is pretty darn close. Now there's a bunch of stuff I can do to make this look more like print. You can expand these and uh, give them a little bit of fuzz around the edges. But I think for 10 minutes work, that's pretty close and I'm pretty happy with it. So this may well be a bumper sticker sometime in the future, but for now, it's just a fun design. So let's save it and uh, I hope you've enjoyed getting a, an inside look on uh, how I design things. And if you're an actual designer, not like me, just pretending to be one on the internet, I hope you're not put off by my... Uh, weird and wonderful style. Thanks for watching.